clearing space is a huge piece of creating magnetism. Where are all the little places that your actions are still communicating an older version of self, even though you're not there anymore? It boils down to what's my authenticity and truth right now? From To Be Magnetic, this is the Expanded Podcast with your host, Lacey Phillips. And your host, Jessica Gill. As the leading destination for neural manifestation, we dispel the woo woo in order to help you create real, tangible results based on neuroplasticity, psychology, epigenetics, and energetics. Our goal is to normalize the practice of manifestation and empower you to get into the driver's seat of your life in order to manifest the experiences, relationships, and things that most align with your authenticity. Part of our manifestation process entails expanding past your limiting subconscious beliefs. Therefore, by tuning into this podcast with interviews from experts, thought leaders, spiritual teachers, scientists, and those with neural manifestation success stories, you're starting the process of expanding your subconscious in order to see to believe that anything you desire is possible. And by pressing play, the process begins. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Expanded. Jessica here. I hope you all are having a fantastic week. We are diving into a topic that we haven't really covered yet on the Explained Expanded series, which is clearing space. It's something that is in our proprietary How to Manifest workshop and is an integral part of one of the three pillars of manifestation, underlying action. Lacey and Janelle really break down how do we clear space? What does it mean? What is the difference between clearing space for a small thing versus jumping off a cliff? How do we clear energetic space? And how does doing this relate to our manifestations? Why does it help create magnetism on the other side? And while you're listening to this episode, just allow and notice any pings or intuition that may be coming up that is saying, this is the thing you need to clear. This is the space you need to make for yourself. This is the energetic space you need to carve out so you can take the time and really create that space clearing moment and magnetism for yourself. Enjoy. And now a word from our partners. Did you know that every single time you brush your teeth, you swallow a little bit of your glob of toothpaste and over the course of a week, you're actually swallowing almost an entire blob. There is so many additives and preservatives and things that are not necessary for keeping our teeth clean, but are simply in our toothpaste just to stabilize the water and make it a paste form. And so founder of Bite Toothpaste Bits, a few years back, invented an incredible toothpaste bite that removes the water and thus removes all the additives. So you have all of the stuff you need for pearly white, beautiful, healthy teeth, and none of the stuff you don't. It is one of the cleanest toothpaste on the market. And it even has nanohydroxypate, which is a natural form of fluoride. So it helps support your teeth, restore your enamel and help with sensitivity. They are my absolute go-to and I love that they are so sustainable and compostable. There's no plastic tube to get rid of. Everything is fully recyclable. You can get it on subscription so you could have the little bites with you. They're so easy to travel with so you don't need to leave it in your check bag. You can go through security with it. And we have a code where you can receive 20% off your order. Use the code MAGNETIC, all caps, M-A-G-N-E-T-I-C for 20% off. Again, that's code M-A-G-N-E-T-I-C. And you can check out the show notes to find their website and all the incredible products they have to offer and their beautiful pledge to sustainability and how they are working to help the environment. I don't know about you all, but my sinuses have been going crazy. Maybe there's more pollen in the air or more dust, but for some reason, my nose keeps getting stuffy and running. And whenever I have anything with my sinuses, the first thing I run to is my beekeepers naturals. You know, we are obsessed with them here at To Be Magnetic. 
They are the company that is reinventing the medicine cabinet by creating clean, effective products powered by the beehive and backed by science. So I will go and grab their nasal spray, which is a completely clean, all natural way to support, clear, and soothe your sinuses when you're having irritation with all of the stuff that you need that helps your body recover without any of the addictive habit forming things that are in other nasal sprays out there on the market. It is packed with propolis, which is the defender of the beehive. Bees use it to line the walls and keep germs out of the hive. And when we take it internally, it is packed with B, C, and D vitamins, zinc, antioxidants, and 300 plus beneficial compounds. So when you get to spray this in your nose, it helps soothe the entire area and keep germs out. And it's also incredible to use before traveling or getting exposed to large groups of people. I heard a long time ago a recommendation that people have always said to put some sort of lubricant in your nose before you're going to go on an airplane or somewhere where you're exposed to a lot of different germs because it helps lubricate the area and can trap the germs. And that's exactly what this propolis nasal spray does, but it has the added benefit of also having vitamins and minerals that are going to boost your immune at the same time. And their herbal formula also includes includes eucalyptus, oregano oil, and xylitol, which will help the flow of mucus and increase nasal volume to help clear your sinus passages. So if you are suffering from allergies, stuffy nose, dust, or you're just going to be exposed to a lot of people and you want to really boost your immune, this is a game changer. You can also check out their throat spray, which I also use to support whenever I fly or travel, I have my nose spray and throat spray in my front pouch and make sure to spray both before getting on the airplane. And my health is in great condition afterwards. It gives me that extra boost. If you want to check out any of the beekeepers natural products, you can go to their site, beekeepersnaturals.com or check the link in show notes and use the code TBM for 25% off your purchase. Again, that is TBM for 25% off. All right, on to the episode. So excited to dive into this one. We've really covered so many topics of the manifestation process before in deeper detail, but the one that we really haven't touched on in its own episode is the clearing space. It's part of aligned action. You know we need to unblock, expand, take aligned action to manifest, and part of that aligned action is clearing space, jumping off cliffs, setting boundaries, you know, all of those things. And under this umbrella of clearing space, what does that look like? How does it impact our manifestations? And how do we know energetically when it is time to jump off a cliff? Because I think there can be small clearing spaces like cleaning out your closet and big clearing spaces like a move or a big life decision that takes longer to resource for. So I'll kick us off with a quote here. Look at your life. What are all the things you are doing that you don't actually enjoy? And that's a really good indicator of where you can start to clear space. So Lacey, kick us off here. And we are greeted today with the lovely chicks only for a little (laughs) longer. But let us know kind of how did you see the energetics of, oh, when I clear space of things that aren't aligned with me, it allows manifestations to come through or more space for them. Yes. I want to apologize in advance for the chick ASMR we'll have in the background. I'll be muted. So anybody who's stressed by that, but maybe Janelle can give us a teeny little (laughs) thematic thing to keep in mind. If you hear the chicks in the background, what is that, Janelle? (laughs) Oh, I mean, yeah. Ultimately, there's some people that are obviously more, more stimulated than not. And if you can, I would just say, maybe we could all just start with taking a deep breath in. <laughs> mm. Actually, and just go ahead right now. Yeah. Just close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Hold for maybe a couple seconds and then just exhale. Sometimes when our nervous system is really revved up, all those little tiny sounds and movement and all those extra can be really extra stimulating. So if we just kind of regulate from within, we can take it in a little bit better. 
Yeah, and then there's space for the chicks. So there's space the chicks for the and chicks. I are coming to fly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Janelle. We should start every episode that way. That's so I was beautiful. just thinking that. I was like, let's do this. <laughs> okay, so to get back to it, if this is the very first episode you're tuning into, you have no idea what we're talking about. Most manifestation methods, you know, they'll talk about like see to believe, pretend, be in the vortex, etc. And I really realized that clearing space is a huge piece of creating magnetism. Magnetism meaning the way that we are projecting out from a subconscious space, our subconscious loops and beliefs, what they project out are either projecting out magnetism or inauthenticity. And that's when we have things in our life that are happening that we don't want happening, right? We're not getting the things we want. We're not connecting with the things we want, hardship, all that stuff. So clearing space is a huge, huge piece of this. And Jessica, so brilliantly, when we were redoing How to Manifest, suggests that we add this into How to Manifest, our proprietary workshop that you learn our manifestation process that's step by step. And so for me, clearing space, to answer your question on an energetic level, Jessica first highlighted In our process, there are three steps that have to be in motion at the same time. It's unblocking your subconscious limiting beliefs. It's expanding, meaning showing your subconscious to see to believe what's possible. And then it's also taking aligned action, which can be jumping off cliffs, passing tests. And another one, you know, is clearing space. That's a really, really big piece. And we were kind of voice noting back and forth. We're like, what should this episode be about? Well, Coming off of these eclipses and Mercury retrograde, I have an intuition, certainly because I'm going through it. A lot of people are probably up leveling, having upheaval, having transitions going on and having to release stuff that no longer serves them. And that's the clearing space piece. And so there's so many ways that can look like that can look like clearing physical space in your environment that creates space for new things to come in and fill that space. It's just completely physics. Like, you know, if you have a totally empty cup of anything, it's just empty. It's a cup. Something has to fill it. That's kind of what we're going to get in today. There's a physical component of it where you can clear things out of your life. You're clearing people, relationships that are no longer serving you. Maybe it's work experiences, maybe it's financial experiences, but there's one piece that I really want to touch on today, and we'll get into that later, is clearing energetic space because that's what I'm going through. I am maturing and have matured. And I'm really taking inventory of everything in my life that maybe hasn't fully caught up with that yet. So it's holding energetic space, meaning what would be an example of that? I was looking at my personal Instagram and, you know, what I was sharing. I was like, you know what? I've matured and there's a piece of me that's feeling called to share with people. I need to like reshift up and clear the space inside of me. What that meant, that meant some unblocking and that meant some like, what are, what's my fear of being seen and, and sharing publicly again, postpartum, post having a baby. So that's something we will get into and dig into because I think that's a piece people don't reflect on clearing energetic space. So there's the physical component. Of course, it's a lot more obvious. There's also an energetic component. So stay tuned on that. Yes, that energetic piece. And I'm so curious also, Lacey, like you're really good at this of sort of detoxing energies and like cutting cords and energetic cords from people, stories, versions of self, you know, and any best practices you utilize there. Janelle, when it comes to, you know, what you've seen clients kind of go through or through the psychological lens of clearing space, what is one of the biggest things that impedes someone from taking that action to clear the space. Someone could sit there and say like, okay, they're starting to simmer on what sort of space they could clear physically. We have an exercise in how to manifest where it takes you through pretty much every single section of your life, your relationships, your social media, your home life, what is in there representing things that are older versions of you that you can clear space from. But then it's following through and kind of outing my own shadow on this, on the challenge. One of the things, it was a small thing, but I had like, okay, I need to like really inventory my closet, throw out the old college dresses and things that are just like stacked up there for this. Maybe I'll wear, I don't know when time that I'm not going to wear and a more elevated wardrobe 
has space to come in. Like, I don't even want to go shopping for things because I'm like, I have nowhere to put it. I'm stacked. The rooms are full, like everywhere stored. I need to get rid of this. And yet it's been the one thing that I just will not do. And I'm like kind of in my own way on it. So I'm like, what is the thing that prevents someone from taking that action? So to me, clearing space it boils down to what's my authenticity and truth right now? What's my yes? What's my no? And what's my truth right now? It's so hard, but like we're always evolving and growing. And then we go, oh, I used to love this or this used to be aligned or I used to this actually the style, you know, used to fit me and it no longer does, but it it fit me six months ago and it fit me a year ago. So it's it's really boiling down to what is my truth right now? There was like a book that was super popular like a decade ago, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. And the premise of that book, it was really, it's she's an organizer, right? But it's a psychology book. And it was basically like, take an object, put it in your hands, check in with your body somatically. Does this spark joy? And if it does, that's a yes. And if it doesn't, then that's a no. And you know, and it's going through literally every object in your home, which I think is a beautiful practice of what lights me up and what doesn't. What's a yes, what's a no? And it gets you kind of somatically in touch with your body to say, what's my practice with this? And then you take it to people and relationships and experiences and jobs and so on and so forth. But it can start with simple objects. But to me, it's, it's ultimately, it's about truth and authenticity. You know, that's what clearing space is. I'm recognizing that this is aligned or this used to be aligned and now it's not anymore. And I'm recognizing that. And now I'm moving forward. That's what it is. That recognizing piece, I think, is so huge because, Lacey, you had this exercise on your Instagram this week of like, wait, let me just take inventory of all the things that are in my life now that I've really wanted years and years ago that I've manifested that are part of my regular routine. And I think sometimes in the manifestation journey, it's always like, what's next? What's next? What's next? But until we can accept and integrate, wait, we're here. We wanted these things and it's here. Like this whole life is surrounded by all these things I loved. Amazing. Now it makes it more clear. What are the other things that like, oh, I just need to let go of? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You guys touched both on some stuff that I want to hit on. I love the authenticity piece because I do use that. I have to say the authentic code. So for somebody who's not familiar with that, also in our proprietary workshop, How to Manifest, there will be a step where you find your authentic code. It's these four pillars that define you. You know, we have a whole exercise around how to find that because once you have that, you can filter everything in life through. So I love that you just made that connection between authenticity and truth right now versus not. And I still feel like we haven't answered, so we'll get yeah. So we're going to like probe you again of like psychologically, what is it that's preventing us from doing that? Like, you know, like Jessica, how she's like, what is making Jessica not throw away the college dress? Yeah. <laughs> like we need to know that, you know what I mean? Because we yeah. all have a feeling of that. And, you know, even as something as silly and superficial as that, I've gone through that myself completely. And having watched my mom's house burn down in the Oak Fire last year, being like, from a spiritual level and, and you know, this trigger yeah. warning because a lot of people experience this and don't feel this way. And certainly my mom's had grief and waves of emotions around it in the spectrum. But I was like, that was the biggest clearing and freeing experience of all, that I've ever watched in my life. So it's really interesting to like dig into that psychology. But getting back to the authenticity truth piece, that's so big. Even something as, as superficial seeming as material objects it's going to be the gateway that allows us to actually dig into the deeper stuff, right? Because in this work, the more heavy hitting steps you need to start taking when it comes to jumping off cliffs and passing tests and clearing space, it usually comes down to hard shit like boundaries. And, you know, if somebody's crossing that boundary, letting that relationship go for a bit, like if they really can't meet you where you're at, and then even more on the energetic space, getting into reading your own patterns and going, wow, 
this energetic thing is blocking me so much. Something that comes to mind is like when I worked with clients, I would see this so often in people who were calling in a relationship that had never really had, or it's been six years, they've never really had that like deep connection. And the first thing I'm searching for is the narcissistic parent or the narcissistic friend that's taking up that relationship space for them or whatever, their version of the, the really big energy in their life they're catering to that's taking up all of the space that would actually be their partnership. And so that's just a, a teeny example of how energetically we have this stuff potentially going on in our life. And in experiences like right now that a lot of us have experienced in these last eclipses and retrograde of upheavals, transitions, up levels, like up level is a whole another level. I think a lot of us went through that after doing the December challenge. Like, holy shit, I just have up leveled and called in and manifested the stuff I was looking for or versions of it. And my nervous system doesn't feel strong enough for this right now. So for the layman's terms, I'm having a lot of fucking anxiety <laughs> for being in this space. And I don't know how to ground and now I'm afraid it's going to be taken away. And what do, how do I like, how do I hold this? Like, you know, and, and that's a whole nother level of work. But often when we've up leveled or we've upheavaled, meaning, whoa, the universe is taking stuff out of our life right now without us even asking for it that we didn't know, which is sometimes considered a rock bottom. And that's always actually a really good thing when it's happening. But so when those things happen on an energetic level, like we can all say it's the dress we don't know how to get rid of right now. That's literally the, the, practice for when this stuff happens of mm -hmm. being able to look at what's going on there unblock it because these bigger things when you're going through an up level it means now so if we just all kind of tune in for a minute and think of the energetics together this is like a little energetic lesson we all think about looking like the way that i look psychically when i was working with clients when something has up leveled basically how you were taking up space before, you're like the little crab that is no longer in that small shell and you don't have a shell anymore, or you're about to step into that bigger shell, that in-between space is now just empty. And the universe is asking you, you've matured, you have ascended more, you have grown. In that in-between space, I'm asking you, to let go of and clear out the things that are no longer serving that. And I, I know in our community, we have extremists because I used to be, and we've, I, we've had an episode on this, when you're like going through and like passing the test and doing the things and doing the dramatic stuff, that's not what the universe is asking because that's actually not a reflection of self-worth and maturity. That's a reflection still of dog paddling. The universe is actually asking you to look at, it's very subtle. It's a gentle integration. You were here, now you're here. Simple, simple energy. With that in-between space, you need to reflect and look around. What's no longer needed that's going to give you more space to support this newer place you're in. And that doesn't always mean friendships, bosses, jobs, relationships, apartments, you know, whatever. It doesn't always mean that. It can actually be internal work. What beliefs are no longer supporting this? What expansion are you needing to like let go of the old expanders you're still so attached to? What's this new level of expansion of consciousness? Like that's what, that's the subtle energy reading work that's happening. So from the physical down to like the, the really, really good, you know, example Jessica's giving, like she's looking at after the challenge, why can I not get rid of these clothes from college and stuff? Like that's an unblocking. The universe is asking her like, yes, look at that, please. Because the newer version of yourself, when you integrate and you unblock is actually going to be connecting with the things that you want more of. So can you please look at that? And that's what clearing space really is. Having so many revelations as you're talking, Lacey, it's almost like in that crab dynamic, I'm holding the old crab shell being like, come along, trying to teeter it in without realizing I almost need like a grief period for that older chapter of my life. It, just how you were kind of saying this maturing thing, there is a sense of identity with 
being in the grid of it all. You know what I mean? Be like, okay, I'm going to get to this. I'm going to do this. And it has to be about all hustle, hustle, hustle. And I've always had this like visual and energy idea of like, okay, when I'm an adult, I'll feel here. And I think I, over the past year, I've up-leveled in so many ways that I'm so much more closer to here than this other version of self, but I'm not willing to just have a little moment of like, thank you, that version for getting us here. I'm all good now. You know, we can let that go. So I think I probably need some sort of internal DI work sitting with not even inner child, but like young twenties, Jess, and saying like, wow, you freaking took us to that next level. Thank you. Oh, I'm getting so much channeling as you're talking. Oh, I can feel like your life with your babies and like all of that stuff so much closer when you're willing to not let her go, but just like you're no longer your six-year-old self and your 12-year-old self, you know, like, like you're saying, giving her the recognition and gratefulness that she needs. And then one other thing that channeled through while you were talking, which is so, so important to note, this feels like advanced. And just for a visual, that's consciousness. So the hardest thing when you start to do any type of spiritual work, like we try to ground this work as much as possible in psychology and neuroscience. But at the end of the day, this is magic. You are doing magic. And when you do that, and when you start to to grow in consciousness, the old stuff that felt so grounded in the stuff we think we need to be safe starts to die off. And all of this essentially is leading to enlightenment. I think about that, that last episode that I did with Zach Bush last year. He was living with indigenous cultures and they, like, they only eat what they kill for the day. They live so close with nature, not that we're all desiring that in manifestation, but it just goes to show as you level up into consciousness, those old things that grounded us, like when we're in our 20s, there's a lot of weird shit that grounds us that into your 30s, then 40s, then 50s, if you are moving in consciousness, they just kind of fall off and die off in importance. So that was just like one little note I wanted to make as we grow in consciousness, still meaning manifesting the things we love into our life, in fact, with more ease because we're not doing it from trauma responses and needing to fill trauma voids and spaces. Like the more we're going into that space, it's a little bit more airy and flowy. And, and so I love the thought of you and any of us having a moment, like really recognizing that old version of self that is just like trying to take that old crab shell with you that you can't even live in anymore. Like you don't even need it and can't live in it anymore. It's like, we are done here and it's trying to hitch a ride. It's like, no, 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 wait, wait, we're not going to go. But that also really makes sense too, because I think even my manifestation list from the challenge manifested everything on it. And I had this moment of like, huh, it doesn't feel like what I thought it would feel like having all of those material things. And that's where I'm like, got it. Cause it really had nothing to do with the material. It was all about the feeling beneath it. And so that's why like I'm in this phase now of, okay, I need to craft a new list. That's more aligned with what do I want that space to feel like? Like I thought the material things would bring the feeling of the space. And I know we know this, we all know this, but we still do it. So I think now it's like really honing in on what does that feel like? If I want a monetary value, forget the number, what do I want to feel like in that? Or if I want a certain home, what is the feeling behind it? Such a good point, Jessica. I think the cool thing that to be magnetic allows you is that playground to learn that on your own. Because a lot of old manifestation and spiritual practices are like, you just need to ascend, or you just need to get in a frequency, or you just need to pretend to be what it is, or have the vision board. And here we're like, here's a step-by-step process that's going to actually make you manifest what you want. And then you're going to feel like Jessica did, or like I have, or the many of us where you're like, cool, I have all of this shit that my authentic self did want, but it wasn't about the stuff or the things. And it was about the feeling, the authenticity being in flow with our soul. But I think the coolest thing about to be magnetic is you have the space to figure that out. You have a result-based process that's going to get that. And then you're going to get there and go, 
aha, so this is actually really about integrating and becoming my whole worthy, authentic self that I was when I was born. Janelle, what are your thoughts on there? What do you, again, kind of back to that block section, like what, what else do you think might stand in the way from someone taking that action too? I think the psychology between objects and like objects relations is so fascinating and there's so many layers. So to answer your original question of why it's going to be so individualized person to person of why they have a trouble getting rid of an object or letting go of a group of friends that no longer serves them or a partner or there's so many layers to it. But what you guys are touching on, which I do feel is very significant that you named was, I want to go back and thank my former self. And what do I love about her? What's, what's beautiful about her? What do I like, you have a moment instead of just moving on and ascending, like, wait a second, this is a part of me. This will always be a part of me. Maybe there's certain aspects I don't want in the driver's seat anymore, but you're also along for the ride. I'm not fully getting rid of you. And being able to appreciate that, it feels really integrated. It feels really mature versus just like, well, ditch that and move forward. You know, for example, I've, you know, shared that I come from a very deep religious background and I look at my old self and I'm like, oh dear God, you know, like, you know, there's parts of myself that I'm like, oh no. However, that girl has like a deep ethics and morality. And I love that about her. I love, love, love that about her. And that I'm taking that with me. <laughs> you know, there are certain things that we're, we're not going to take with me about that. But that aspect, I am for sure taking with me, you know. So, for example, like you're talking about old college dresses. Like, what do you love about college dress? What, is, what aspects of her is a part of you today that will forever be a part of you that you love and appreciate? And that actually might help get rid of an object or get rid of a old friend group that no longer serves? Like what parts of yourself do you want to keep? Just to use that word again, it feels mature. It feels integrated. It feels right. And then hit us, Janelle, with obviously not the full spectrum of hoarding and things like that. That's like, you know, that's deeper stuff. But the true psychology when we are in hardship of setting that boundary that or letting that friendship space go or that we are still allowing the narcissist to fill the space of our relationship or letting the material thing go like what is going on in in, when you are working with clients what's going on there that can help direct us of where we may need to look at someone blocking again it's so hard because it's like so individual one that comes up a lot for people is like the person they're dating that they know they, you know, they broke up with, maybe they're the ex, but they keep allowing them back in their life. They can't kind of hold that boundary. They can't fully let go. They keep pulling them back in, even though they're like, okay, I'm done. I sent the letter. It's over. And then a month later, they're still entertaining them. What's preventing them from letting go and clearing that space? That one specifically feels more trauma bond when we know, okay, this person is not healthy for us, everything in my body, my head knows I need to go, but I can't stop. (laughs) That's a trauma bond. That one's a lot more layered and complex where I feel like psychoeducation and support are absolutely necessary for leaving, whether it's an abusive relationship, a toxic relationship, or trauma bond that's maybe not abusive, but there needs to be more simple steps to really go, this is a trauma bond, let me understand it. I think the psychoeducation really helps to anchor somebody to leave when you can get kind of swept up in the romanticism. But then obviously there's you know, that's that going back to that corrective experience. You know, we've talked about that before on the podcast. Yes, that was just coming to mind. Like, let's remind people what corrective experience is and what's going on, because I feel like that any of the examples we're going to give from physical to energetic are probably when you're really like in the deep imagining and going down to the root, it's most likely all a corrective experience. Yeah, so... Actually, Lacey, you used used to talk about this book a lot, but Getting the Love You Want by, you know, Mago Therapy. But basically, like, we will 
you know, and this is in the Unblock Love Workshop, very spelled out beautifully, but basically that we will be attracted to aspects of partners that um, we experienced in our, you know, growing up from our caregivers. And so we'll find, let's say, let's say our, our parent was an addict and then we're, you know, we're finding another addict. We Maybe we've like made peace, the fact that our dad's an addict or mom's an addict or whatever, but there's this piece of us that's like, okay, you're essentially the same energetic and maybe I can get you to love me the way I need. And so we're, we're finding somebody that's, we maybe let go of our parents, we're okay, but it's that same energy that we're trying to say, am I good enough? Will you love me? Will, if I be this way and this way and this way, it's kind of this like very, almost like young ego dance that we do to try to get that person to love us. So that's where that we want that corrective experience that we are so hungry for. So it's a process to separate out, oh, that's a wounded inner child piece. My core self knows this person is an addict. I'm never going to get the, the nourishing love my soul craves with this person. I know that. However, this inner child is really wanting that corrective experience. And that's why I keep yo-yoing back and forth with this person. And I need to tend to my inner child to make her feel so just whole and meet all those needs so that now my core self can actually walk away and my adult self can ask for the support I need and understands the psychoeducation to really be able to cut ties and separate. So it's a, it's a process. I love this because as you're speaking, and I know a lot of people listening are like, I'm not going after the addict or the whatever, but the corrective experience is truly applicable, if I'm correct, Janelle, to like a material thing. If maybe your love language was, it was presence because you got a lot of presence growing and now it's like hard to let go of the, because what I'm starting to see in real time as we're talking, I'm assuming when people are going to do the deep imagining to see like, why can't I let this thing go that I know I need to? When they get down there, it's most likely at the end going to be a, either a corrective experience they were unaware of, you know, whether it's the physical, a relationship, a, a job thing or whatever. Or I think it also could be at a little bit more advanced of a level just energetically something they haven't looked at, you know? So like, for instance, in my thing, like what these eclipses have been forcing me to do, it's just like, look at everything. Krista Williams from Almost 30, my friend, she has a great, I think she even turned it into a course, The Life Edit. Mm -hmm. And it's like a really good starting point to just like you, she goes, she teaches you how to go through every single aspect of your, your life from finances to everything and just do an edit. She does it once a year. So that's like a good starting point on the physical, right? But when I was being asked to look at, do all parts of my life integrate at this moment? It was a no from like, company to the farm to relationship to my social media and everything. And it was like, no crazy things have to happen here, but we're all maturing in different ways. And to make it all cohesive, I'm going to look at the little energetics around all that maybe haven't fully connected yet. So I, I'm starting to feel like as we're talking, when people are looking at clearing space, usually if they have not yet or they're being called to, it seems at the bottom of an unblocking, they'll see it's either a corrective experience, or maybe they just haven't taken a look at everything yet of how to make it all cohesive as they upheave, up level, transition, etc. Yeah, as you were saying that too, the way I'm kind of seeing it is like, okay, something you might not be able to let go of, you might be running back into the fire, yo-yoing with, because there's that corrective experience you really need to look at, you need to learn the lesson. Sometimes it takes seven times to put something away for it to actually stick. But every time you do that, you're expanding your nervous system, what it's like without that thing. So don't think that you're a failure for going back to something. You're continuing to expand your nervous system to prepare to be without it. But then the other element, it seems like you're talking about, Lacey, where it's like a full integration of your up level across all energetics that you are participating in and like are part of your world. And that to me feels like sometimes like when we up level in relationships, the spaces in our friendship, it doesn't feel safe to talk about how secure our new 
relationship is because you're around people that aren't at that level yet. So it's almost like you have to bring that up-leveled version in one element of your life back into the other ones to lift those all up again. And that makes total sense. And for people to have their like, gosh, this all sounds still so abstract, that second piece we're talking about, like the energetic, to make it land a little bit more with an example. So I feel like where my life left off was the day before I had Teddy and then today. And so that's where... I like that's what this eclipse season has been asking me to do. Now that you're out of quote unquote sort of postpartum and stuff and you're back into yourself and everything, let's catch everything up and connect it. <laughs> like mm-hmm. let's do that's what it's asking of me. So that's just to give like one example of how the more energetic piece could look, which it sounds like too Jessica you could be going through versions of the energetic piece at this moment as well. And it's also reflecting in some physical Yes. Yeah. And the, and the places I have to kind of look at is be like, okay, yes, this worked for my life at this chapter, but where do I need to set strong boundaries with self, with others? Where do I need to get rid of belong physical belongings that don't align with this chapter of self? I've elevated to this next piece. So how do I have that reflect in every aspect of my life? How do I integrate that new version of self? Someone tagged us in a story the other day and she's working on up-leveling her self-worth and putting herself first and putting her needs first. And she said when she went through her, her work schedule or what she had to get done the rest of the day, her body really wanted to go for like a workout. It's just like crave day. It was like, I can't wait to go out. And then she looked at her task list. She was like, I don't have time to do this. I'm going to blow past it. And in the past, she would have blown past it because she wasn't prioritizing herself. But she realized by choosing the workout was choosing her, choosing her needs. And she was at a place where she could integrate that really seamlessly knowing the work can wait or I can figure it out or it'll probably get done faster because I have the energy now from the workout, you know, whatever that is. And so it's like, where are all the little places that your actions are still communicating an older version of self, even though you're not there anymore. By now, you're starting to get the feel for TBM. Maybe you've heard about our workshops and you're interested in manifestation, but you just don't have the time or energy to sit down and do self-help work. We totally get it. In fact, that's why we created The Daily Practice, which is our massive library of self-hypnosis tracks that you can do anytime without having to jump into a workshop. We call these tracks our Deep Imaginings, or DIs. DIs are different than normal meditations because we designed them using a combination of self-hypnosis techniques, deep theta waves, EMDR-informed tools, and somatic experiencing a fully loaded formula that is scientifically proven to help you clear your blocks and triggers on a subconscious level, giving you the power to actually create new neural pathways in your brain. So if your boss pisses you off, use our trigger DI. If you want to feel magnetic before a party or an important meeting, use the magnetic self DI. If you're feeling anxious or down on yourself or you need help making a decision, we've got a DI for all of these scenarios and more. You can get full access to the daily practice inside the Pathway membership, where you'll also get unlimited access to every workshop, tool, and offering from TBM. The tools in the Pathway membership will support you year round, whether you're in the worst, a rock bottom, or second worst, a rut, or feeling good and you wanna keep the magnetism going. In the Pathway, you'll effectively learn how to become your own manifestation coach, all for less than a dollar a day. So even if you're not ready to start a workshop, join the pathway and start rewriting your neural pathways now to create magnetism. Work through your triggers and get closer to your authentic magnetic self in order to manifest. Use our special code MAGNETIC, all caps, M-A-G-N-E-T-I-C, to receive $20 off your first TBM purchase. Again, that's all caps, MAGNETIC. Now back to the episode. Does this, and we kind of talked about it with some of these bigger things, and I think the corrective experiences are typically where we jump off the cliffs, but jumping off cliffs is like 
the bigger version of clearing space. It's like the, when we know there's a big shift we need to make, it could be setting a huge boundary. It could be moving across country, leaving a relationship, changing jobs, whatever. How do people know when they are resourced and ready to make that jump? And is there an energetic now point that hits them? Even though they feel fear, is there like a pinpoint that we could kind of paint the picture of too? It's interesting. You know, some people have very strong mobilization energy. They can just do it and do it right now. And I always admire people that can just do that because I feel like I'm someone that I have to take my time. I'm like, I know I need to do it, but I have to kind of sit in it for a while before I do it. If you're like me, that's okay. You know, if, if you need time to really sit in it, even just by, yeah, I know I need to do that and I'm going to do that. If you take a while to metabolize, that's okay. Well, while you're saying that too, Janelle, explain to someone what it means, like a first time listener, when you say your nervous system, because you're going through somatic training right now. So when you do need to sit in something and you don't feel like you can mobilize, like let's hear nervous system and then move into Yeah. Yeah. So our nervous system will go up and down in this really normal cycle, you know, where we're activated during the day and then we're rest and digest and that's all normal. Sometimes people run a little low and they need more activating energy and some people run high and they actually need, they need help moving more towards more rest and digest energy. Everybody's going to hit differently. There's times when we go through trauma that we go through what's called these trauma vortexes. So sometimes that trauma vortex will be in more of a depression and sometimes it'll be more in that real intense fight or flight energy. And so I think when you think about change, for some people, they're like, heck yeah, you know, and other people are like, whoa, 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 whoa. How does your nervous system respond to change? Are you somebody that you pull way back and you need kind of help assimilating it? Or are, are you somebody that's kind of in that fight or flight energy that needs to really resource and ground and be in nature and bring deep presence in to help you adjust to change? And there's so many, I mean, I think the vast majority of the TV magnetic population are very sensitive people that are usually really, you know, sensitive people, you know, they just feel and experience things so much deeper. And so a lot of resourcing is required to help make changes. So it sounds so simple, but it's so profound to just be practicing presence wherever you are, where you just get to slow down and you focus on an object and you check in with your body and you check in to see where you have tension in your body and you move to go, oh, I'm, you know, my shoulders are tight, you know, because I've been running around doing stuff and how do I drop them and go back in my body? And the more that you can kind of help your body be in that zone of regulation, the more e easy we're going to be able to, to adjust to change. And I love what you're saying too, because if we do hinge on the theory that what's preventing a lot of people from clearing space is because of some sort of a trauma that you're trying to correct, you know, to be whole, it's really important for somebody. It, one thing you've said in the past and is factual in order to renegotiate trauma, your nervous system has to be calm, meaning you have to be regulated in that rest and digest space. So the resourcing piece is quite big. And when you were training us, when we were crafting the deep imaginings that we released last year for the different challenges, a lot of the work we did around it was somatic experiencing to be able to get people into that regulated rest and digest space so that they could renegotiate trauma. So this is a really, really good point that if you're sitting there and you're like, I can already see the things that I'm needing to clear space on, what deep imaginings would you suggest, Jessica, would be the ones that can, the resourced ones, and obviously like a little bit of a teaser, we're coming up with more, like stay tuned, really cool stuff's coming this year. But what would you direct? Would it be the safe DI? Just so that somebody can even get into a place to start. Okay. It's like after a nap. Yeah. Okay. I can look around and I can start to see the places to clear space. Yeah. I think safe is a great one, especially if you're, whenever I wake up like in a funk and you're like, I feel so detached from 
my authenticity. Safe kind of grounds you in like, okay, what's a place that you have joy, that you love, that makes you happy? You know, what's a person, all of that. The beginning of our fear DI, anxiety DI, I mean, both of those full DIs actually are going to do that for you. The unblock DI, align action, but also the first, I would say 10 minutes of the inner child one. Sometimes I'll just play that on loop because it's so grounding for me. If you only have 10 minutes, you don't have a lot of time. Like that one is so good. You don't have to go into all the inner child stuff just yet, but that beginning part has really good somatic experiencing exercises. So I always do that one and just refresh it and replay it and calm my nervous system. Okay. Now, when do we know that we need to clear space? (laughs) And I think the How to Manifest workshop actually lays it out pretty perfectly. A really good touch-in point and check-in point is whenever you do revisit or do for the first time our authentic self, finding your authentic code and doing the authentic self, deep imagining you're going to have some clarity of those four pillars that I talked about in the beginning that define who you authentically are. And just having that anchor is already going to give you ample space to look around your life, your relationships, your everything, your job, your daily rhythm, everything. You're going to be able to look around and say, okay, what doesn't really truly align with and fall into these? You'll be able to filter. So I think that's one really good jumping off point. I would suggest that when things happen in your life, like these eclipses that happen, I'm sure a lot of people have, a, like the things I've mentioned, upheaval, up level, transitions coming up, whether they're energetic or pretty pretty uh, opportunity-based or physical. I think that's another great time uh, looking of when you need to clear space. What would you guys suggest? Well, if I know it's time to like jump off a cliff, it's usually a pinpoint. It's like, I remember in like past relationships when I like got the ping so much longer before the relationship ended, like you got to leave, you got to leave, you got to leave. And then I was like, I'm not leaving. And then there was one moment where it's like, it, it hit a threshold and this is it. I'm out of this relationship. When it comes to jumping off cliffs, you don't need to force it before you're ready. Feel what's coming up on a daily basis. That's why we always say like track your tests and your triggers and everything coming up and like don't avoid that work because that's going to prepare you. But when it's time, you'll just know. And I think with clearing space, it's probably that same energetic, but just faster because it's not as big of a jump. Even thinking of the clothes example, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go give space to that version of self, but I already feel way more mobilized when I get home to go through that stuff because now I see the intention behind it in a deeper level and way. Yeah. What else would you say there, Janelle? Yeah, I agree. I think it's the the biggest cliff I jumped off was I was in a, a big corporate job and my son, I had, you know, a newborn and I had already, you know, got my degree and finished my hours, but I knew I needed to go back and, and I wanted to be a therapist. I remember going back and going like, I'm not, and I was in therapy at the time. I'm like, I'm not ready to quit yet. And it took me four months to be back in until I was like, yep, now's the time. And so when you were sharing that, I was like, yeah, I had I knew I was going to do it, but it wasn't ready yet. And until I got the, okay, yep, this is what I'm doing. And I will say too, after I jumped off that cliff, you know, it was like, oh my gosh, did I just make the worst decision of my life? All of the fears, all of that totally got metabolized. I think after you have a child, there's like, you can't put up with any bullshit. It just is like what matters becomes very clear and what doesn't becomes very clear. So I, at that time, had the, like my love of my little newborn to be able to anchor me in to go, yeah, this is right, even though I had all the fears. And I look back, I actually was just even thinking about this it, just even a few weeks ago of just like, thank God, thank, I'm so grateful for my life and what I get to do. And it's so deeply aligned with my soul. Like, thank, thank God to my 30-year-old self for jumping off that cliff. Like, I'm so grateful, so grateful. But it was terrifying at that time. And I had no idea where I would end up. But I'm so grateful I did. 
That's kind of another piece I want to paint the picture for people, almost like what to look forward to on the other side of doing this. Because that knowing there's so much goodness on the other side of clearing that space, jumping off that cliff, whatever it is that you are held when you're doing it from a place of authenticity and listening to your intuition and your pings, you will be rewarded. It is for your highest good. What can people look for there? Well, number one is magnetism. Like everything we're talking about creates magnetism because getting back to just basic principles, anytime you step through fear, you're creating significant magnetism because the universe is like, cool. So the old ways that you used to settle for in the past, that was low self-worth behavior that was based on, you know, pain, shame or programming you picked up in childhood. Oh, cool. You want to get back to your true whole worthy self that you were born as before you experienced those things. You're making an effort to go towards that. That's all you need to do. I'm here for you. Like I'm here to give you what you want and connect you with what you want because it's the universe's only intention is to connect us back with our whole worthy selves. So it's like we're always just dancing with the universe. So that's number one is magnetism. You have magnetism to look forward to on the other side when you set that boundary, when you jump off that cliff, when you pass that hard test or that not so hard test. And based on the level of fear that you're stepping through, the level of release that was scary to release, the universe will grant you with more magnetism. And we have a whole episode on how that's not the only thing that creates magnet. Like you'll get magnetism, but then you have to do the work around it and blocking and expanding, or it starts to just repeat the same patterns of tests. So that's number one to look forward to. What do you guys think? I mean, to me, that's how everything good in my life has ever happened has been jumping off of a major cliff. That's my life path is like going through the mud and the muck. Then the universe be like, (laughs) when are you going to jump off the cliff? And then I do. And sometimes it's a lot faster than others that all of the things fall into place. And what contributes to that is how unblocked, how expanded. That's the aligned action piece. It's like how unblocked and how expanded am I around that? So I'll, I'll kick it over to you guys of, of what to look forward to. I, I really like that you said too, like how soft the landing is, so to speak, is like how unblocked, how expanded, how much line action you take. Because I think the times where I've jumped and I'm a little slower to do it, like in the relationships I think of in the past, I had the ping probably a year before I ended the relationship. When I made the jump, I was so unblocked, expanded. And re- mm-hmm. like, I was like, cool. So it was like a hit the ground running. Everything was great on the other side. And then the times that I've jumped off cliffs, like transitioning out of film and television into wellness, when I first was like, I'm never taking a job in this this section of the industry again, there was a, a period of like, are you sure? Are you sure? Here's all the tests. Here's the magic dark. And I was like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. But I kept showing up. I kept facing them. I kept looking at the blocks. I kept trying to find expanders, you know, and then the most magical TBM job came through. You just have to keep showing up and you'll know when you have that timing of, okay, this is, this is the time to make that shift. One other thing I wanted to touch on, what are both of your thoughts on this idea that the thing that we most medium like is preventing us from the things that we absolutely love? Because so many times people will fill their life with things that are like, yeah, that's good. I don't dislike it. I don't not want it, but is it something I love? And I think about that cup that you were talking about, Lacey, like we have this cup that we are filling. And if we keep adding the things that we're like, it's not bad, it's not toxic, it's not making me small and peedy on my boundaries. You know, it's not necessarily a test. Back to the clothing example, the dress that you have in your closet, you're like, it's fine. I'll wear it to some events, but you're not, if you had to pick out now for a date night or a special event, you would never pick that dress. What is the energetics of those almost like second best things? How do they come into play with manifestations? Well, to me, what that all sounds like, two things I want to say, like just circling back on our journey of consciousness, the universe is never going to hit you with crazy rock bottoms with those things. Because like you said, they're not massive tests. They're not, you're not settling tremendously. The way I look at that on a spiritual journey is it's part of the journey. 
I look at those things as bridge. They're bridge moments. Like they really are just bridge moments. And based on how you're going to be guided from the universe and, and massaged and pushed, you're going to at some point go, oh, I'm ready for the real thing. It's, it's inevitable. So it's not like a crazy drastic thing, in my opinion. I've had that with many things. And we get like looking at the material is really helpful for people because we all, you know, exist and have material things where you may, like you've talked about it, Jessica, the cou- the chair you're manifesting, you're actually really good because you're like, I'm not going to take that because why would I settle for something I don't want when it's sort of what I want, but you still haven't manifested the chair yet, right? Well, I did, but then I decided I didn't want it. Well, that's fantastic. <laughs> it came through like underpriced with an ottoman, all the things. And I was like, dang, I actually don't want it. <laughs> that's fantastic. So what that thing served as for you when you were offered that potential of the chair, it was a bridge. And you mm. said, you know what? I don't need this chair right now. I don't have to have it. So you said no to the bridge. And of course you manifested the thing because of the other components of unblocking, expanding, et cetera. And then you realized... The second point I want to make right now, based on this question, is it's not about the chair. Again, it gets back to what you said at the earlier part of this. It's not about the dress. It's not about the things that I manifested on my list when I was doing the challenge back in December and I got everything. It's about the feeling underneath that's in alignment with my whole worthy self, my soul. And that's what it all really is. I know that feels lofty and big, but... Essentially, I think that's what all this work is. And let's I'll just get really spiritual for a minute. The universe doesn't give a shit who your partner is, what material things you want in this life that you chose coming to the human experience to do. All it gives a shit about is that you get back into your whole worthy, authentic self. So if along the way that has to be this relationship, this house, this thing, da da da, for you to figure out in this pretend matrix game of life great. It's going to connect you with the right things along the way that you're asking for as you continue on the process to get into your whole worthy, authentic self. That's what this is all about. So I know that goes like above and beyond, but at the end of the day, that's the real takeaway here. When you're like, I'm too afraid to get rid of the dress or I'm afraid to jump off the cliff and stuff. There's a really bigger picture at hand that is dancing with you, guiding you, holding you, all the stuff. And this to me is knowing this fact and really sitting and feeling this fact is how you build that trust muscle because then you have detachment from your manifestations. You don't need that chair. It can come through if you want it, but it doesn't really shift your life in any major way because what's shifting your life is your internal state is like what is going on with your authenticity. Yes, 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 yes. I love it. Yeah, it's it's interesting cuz we are always talking, you know, it's like manifestation and we want these things, but like ultimately, it's really like sourcing your happiness and your peace <laughs> from within, really getting to that place where you're just you're on a spiritual level there and then it's like, "Oh, cool, that that came or yeah, I want it or I don't want it." It's just it's not as you're not out of that with desperation energetics, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, which is like the the whole irony about the whole, the whole thing is ever for me, I have a pattern every time I actually surrender and I try to play games with myself like, okay, you're going to surrender it because then it'll come through and it's like, no, nah, it doesn't work that way. But when you actually, I'm like, yeah, you know, I mean, even I remember with my car, this was like years ago and I was deep in the TBM work at the time. And it was like, you know what? It, this car isn't, it's like, whatever, this is an ego thing. And like, it's fine. Literally three days later, I get in an accident and it wasn't a bad one. And then I got more money reimbursed from insurance, whatever. And I'm like, oh, that's so funny. When I totally made peace with driving my kind of crappy car, then I got my car. That's always been my pattern with every big manifestation is when I'm at peace, you know, it comes through. And I loved you said it's it's not about the thing, the material, that it's really our internal compass when we're at peace. Yeah. Yes, says every guru religion and spiritual practice since the beginning yeah. of time. So really 
when you're in the TBM community, we're just kind of tricking you to manifest <laughs> all these great things you want. It works. You're going to manifest them. But at the end of the day, that's like the ultimate goal here. And you're, mm-hmm. you're on the perfect journey and path as you're doing it, going through the shit, the test, the boundaries, the unblocking, and all the beauty of the manifestations and the good stuff and the house and the relationship and the everything. And then you're going to start arriving at this and like that's that's the beauty that's the piece and for anyone who's listening who's like yeah but I want the house I want the thing I want the whatever great manifest it Go I have for it, it. Yes. Same. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes still have a list yes. use the method you can still do that it works yeah like we're gonna yes. get them <laughs> yes <laughs> oh my gosh I love that little closing note to energetic cords, I think about. It's like a term that's thrown out in a lot of spirituality and like separating cords and being in your own energy. Is there any quick tools or practices when people are clearing space that they can clear energetically? When we had Barbie on, who's one of our wise members, and she was like, I was so my cords to my children after they moved out of the house. I still want to be connected to them, but I was almost so anxious and worried and whatever about them that I had to like say, no, I need to be back in my own energy now. I've raised you. I'm still here for you. But you know, what's this next chapter for me? And I think about people using social media and how accessible everyone is to each other. Like any best practices on energetic clearing to be back in your own embodiment. What do you guys do? Because I have TBM thoughts. So I'll share those after. But what are the fun, witchy things that you guys do? I have Daniel Sage. (laughs) So weird, but I've really got him into it when we're really like frazzled fried and it's like, oh, we've had too much social time or whatever. I'll have him like light Sage and like, he'll be like, okay, clear all the energy around Jess's body. And then like, I'll do the same to him. And it really feels different after. Like, it's such a silly little thing, but I think the intention behind it really makes a difference. On a really funny note, in Mariposa, when we were there last, this was the most next level clearing I've seen where we were in the health food store and there was like this super, I mean, when you meet, you know, like a soul gazer, like looking through your body hippie yeah. guy, <laughs> held the door for Teddy and I as we were walking out, like full eye contact. So, and I'm like, thank you. And he didn't even need to say it. It was so deep. And then as we're like putting groceries into, <laughs> into the trunk, we look over and it's so beautiful. And in the parking lot, he was saging us. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> There's something to be said for, you know, just saging yourself when you need it. (laughs) Wow. Oh, man. You know, there was like a a point, this was, I call it like my spiritual teenage years, because again, growing up religion, you can't do anything woo-woo. And so there was a point where I'm like, I'm going to go nuts and I'm going to give myself full permission. And I saw all the healers and I did all the things. And it was interesting. um, And it was a really beautiful, wonderful, very special time in my life. But there was a cord I was trying to cut. And I remember like, can you cut this for me? Can you cut for this for me? And I was kind of like, and those, there were some very supportive things, but ultimately it came back to kind of some cold reality, to be honest, of like, okay, I just need to grieve. I need to actually go through the grieving stages of... I can't just have somebody say, oh, you're going to cut this cord. I actually had to feel my anger and my rage, which at the time was very hard for me to feel anger. And I had to feel the sadness and I had to go, I had to go through all of the things. And so now I, I think we can make anything sacred. And so for me, sometimes if at night I will light a candle, I'll put on my biomat, I will sage I will go into a prayer meditation and just more of, it's more of like an emotional clearing space of like, I'm releasing, I might play just music that brings that out. And it's more of an intention of, I'm carrying this thing or I have feelings around this thing. So I'm going to create a very sacred container for me to feel and have that release. But I also know that it's never a quick fix and it's such a process. So when the next morning, if I have a resurgence of feelings, it's like, this takes time. Like, especially with like forgiveness, you know, that's a big part of, I think, 
cutting cords is, is, you know, that's such a process to get to organically. It's not forced. That feels honoring to your soul, you know, whatever experience you had. It feels like it's not just like a one-time cut. It's like a, you know, it's a process. I couldn't agree with you more. So there's a couple layers I want to sh- share here because I'm always up to witchy stuff. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> number one, you just hit it on the head 100%, Janelle, because it all comes down to an energetic, right? And so at the end of the day, usually cutting a cord comes down to to me, because I'm into such subconscious projection, it usually comes down to have you in relationship to this thing you're needing to cut, if you're aware of what the thing is you need to cut, have you actually landed at the subconscious boundary and the subconscious, I can't be penetrated. So that's when I notice nobody's coming at me anymore. Like, cause there's such a shield around me from my subconscious in relationship to this thing is so at this point integrated and strong. So that's number one. And I think the way to get there is exactly what you're talking about. It's through the work. It's the grief that, you know, that's the only way that you're truly going to put up that subconscious shield or cut that cord or whatever. But I need to give a big shout out too, because I'm such an open energy that there's one woman I work with all that I can always feel when I have spirits attached to me, I have a hex on me, I have a <laughs> something on me that I can't deal with myself, because I'm not even aware of who it is, or what it is, you know, like any time that you're visible and porous. So her name is Shannon and I have her in my phone as Shannon Ghostbuster, literally, because <laughs> the very first time I worked with her, I had a spirit. I couldn't get off me. She's a friend of my sister. And now I have like literally everybody I know will have her clear their house. So she's clearing off spirits that are attached to you. I always know when a spirit's attached to me because I'm having bad dreams all the time. So I know it's not my energy or if I'm very sad and I know I'm like, I'm not sad about anything. You know, it's just like a sad, I'm like, oh, I'm carrying a spirit's energy. So anyways, that's Shannon. And then also Chloe Garcia Ponce. She's so phenomenal. I I worked with her. She was amazing. Amazing. And we'll link her because we have her site because we've had her on a podcast episode. So I think the real like true, true protection is subconscious work, you know, and and really building that up. But sometimes you have shit on you, you don't know. (laughs) So that's when you pull off the big guns. (laughs) I love it. This is really powerful. Thank you guys so much for this episode. I really hope everyone at home can really sit with this, think about how they've grown, how they have up-leveled, what does not align anymore, how they can start to clear space, Start doing those DIs to resource and prepare your nervous system, grieve and face the parts of you that need time sitting with them. The inner child DI is great for grieving work. You can call instead of your inner child, you could call in the part that you need to grieve, whatever you need to sit with there and excited to see what shakes out. Thank you both so much. Thank you, chicks. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, chicks. They calmed again by the end. I know. Yeah. I know. It's like, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning into the episode, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, we did. And in case you're not totally ready to join the pathway yet, I wanted to share a few of our free offerings that I'll often suggest to people as a little bit of a blueprint to get them started on their manifestation journey. The first place I like to direct people completely for free is the motivation. You can see it linked below or on our homepage as our testimony library. And it's categorized by different subjects, whether you're calling in career, money, love, wellness, and much more. When you're reading about a member's experience of what they manifested, you're actually seeing to believe and showing your subconscious that that very thing is possible for you. The second place I like to direct people, if you haven't listened to it on this podcast yet, please go back to the episode titled Manifestation 101, where you'll learn the basics of neural manifestation to truly understand this process. So go ahead and check out those free resources, the motivation and the episode Manifestation 101, all linked below. And in an effort to make sure to have representation in this process series, go ahead and submit any process testimonials you have. 
especially to our LGBTQ plus community, our BIPOC, as well as the Ys, which is anyone in the community who is 45 and over. All right, we'll be back next week.